Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, today we're going to be going through this dungeon, the Water Wheels of Naladum. This is the first dungeon I had trouble with. Uh, not because of the combat or anything, but mostly because it appears to be the first dungeon that actually requires you to have more than one person, that you can't solo through it. And, and so we're going to be attempting to solo through it. And if you're watching this, this is a good chance you have run into some of the same pitfalls that I have. Um, and I'll show you how I got around those pitfalls to be able to solo this two-man, three-man dungeon. Because um, it, it, it was developed in such a way that it looks like you need at least two people. So the tricks, you can get through it. Um, depending on how long this combat takes, I might fast forward to some of the combat. But uh, to get to the, the tricky parts of the dungeon, uh, we'll see how that goes in the end of editing this. And other than that, uh, I, I will say that my Bjorning abilities were barely able to let me through the dungeon. They. Uh, in order to get there's two two aspects that uh, are important if you want to be able to make it through here solo. Um, one is that your character can go fast enough out of combat, and the other is required for the challenge for the dungeon. Um, as long as your character can go fast enough, you can solo it. But if your character is too slow. I don't know which classes don't have move speed buffs, but uh, I know Bjorning has a 40% out of combat move speed buff. Um, Wardens can move 38% faster out of combat, I'd imagine they can still make it. Uh, but something like a lore master, I don't know if they would have the necessary speed to make it through here solo, and you might have to find a friend um, or someone in world chat to help you. Um, we actually are pretty close to the first pitfall and this is really the only pitfall if you just want to beat the dungeon if you just want to get done with but now there was also the challenge um, quest which also appeared to require at least that one looked even harder that one definitely was uh, a lot harder to figure out but it is possible to solo the challenge quest even though the way this dungeon works it basically tells you to have a group to open these doors. Because a lot of these doors only open up temporarily. Um, you'll see here, I, this lever pulls up that gate. Um, but what you don't see is that that lever actually controls a lot of doors deeper in the dungeon. And normally what you're supposed to do is have one person deeper and one person at the lever. And to activate it from, a, from up here while you're split up, but I'm going to show you how to bypass those. Um, so yeah, this is the door that is uh, especially tricky. All you need to do is be able to move fast enough and you can get from this lever, which only opens the doors for about 8 seconds, and you get from that lever to this door before it closes. Um, I would, I barely make it with 40%, I would guess 38% is still good enough, but 30% might not even be good enough, I don't know. You'd have to be really, really fast. This stone wheel just opens up a bridge down there, it's not very important. There's a lizard down here, I can... Uh, so. I did finish the challenge for the dungeon yesterday, um, so I don't know if it's going to show up or anything. I don't know what the time random challenges are. It said it was repeatable, so I would guess maybe in a few hours, if it was a 24 hour full down. Um, but yeah, so here I'm getting position 
I want to be able to activate this lever because uh, I'll show you the naive run I guess. You activate the lever. Start running for the door. Get a second and speed boost. The door's closed. And I mean the trick is to just get there as fast as possible. So what I do is I have my hotkey set up so I don't have to right click the lever because if I'm facing the other way and I right click the lever it turns my character and I don't want to do that because I want to come out of the gate running so I line it up and I use my hotkey I have shift Z set up to you or U is the default to use items if you use the hotkey you won't turn your character around and you can actually start running before you finish uh, pulling the lever so I'm to back a little bit and when I'm about one eighth of the way from finishing I just start running and it still doesn't finish now I can jump over that and just barely make it in. Um, it might take you a few tries, but if you do have the speed, you are able to make it through there. And that's the, the hardest part to solo. Uh, then none of the mobs in here are really too tough, except for near the end. Really. But these lizards are pretty easy. At least with my gear. Um, so yeah, there's a good chance if you made it to this part of the dungeon solo, you can make it through the rest. But now I'm also going to show you how to finish the challenge, uh, which everywhere I looked online said there was no way to do it solo, but I, I noticed something that made me think it is maybe possible and I tested it out and it worked. So if you really don't want to find someone to help you, or you just uh, like the idea of flying solo. I'll show you how to get the challenge. Because the challenge does involve hitting, reaching one of two secret rooms that normally would require these levers from up here being used while someone else is down there. And defeating the mobs inside the room. So now here is one of the rooms that would be required for challenge. This is the one that's controlled by the first lever, I imagine. At least that's what I've read. Um, and here's another room. And in, in order to get across there, getting across here would finish the challenge, but there's this gap I've tried many times. It is not jumpable, at least with only a 40% move speed. Maybe it's like a, I've seen somebody get 190% move speed bonus with the Guardian. I don't know how it's possible, but he was at a way higher level. He can drink coffee, he can do whatever. Maybe he can make it across this gap, but um, we don't need to do that. What we need to do is use the help of this guy. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to kill these lizards. 
and I was will take note of something that happens when I'm in this battle. So I go fight these lizards, and he slapped me. He knocked me back pretty far. And so we're gonna take advantage of that knockback and use it to get across. I'm gonna advance a little bit. We're gonna be back here, killing lizards at some point. But now what we're gonna do is because just because we're in a dungeon, he never de aggros We're gonna kite him over to this spot and wait for him to slide for the cross. But the problem is he'll only do that at the start of combat. At the start of combat, he gains a run a run buff. He runs at us then his first attack is bad because we've already been counted that he won't knock us back so in order to reset him we're gonna just jump off uh incapacitate myself but that's okay because falling off the ledge does not hurt your durability maybe it does uh but it doesn't I think that their ability was from other battles, but we'll, we'll check the next stuff if it happens. Um, so now we're going to go back there, and we're going to, what we're going to do is, in order to preserve his buff, we're going to stun him at the start of combat, and then kite him, and run over to the spot, and then he'll activate the buff when he gets in, within a certain range of us. So I'm just going back to the, where he, where, where the room is. So we'll be in that spot and hit him just slapping us isn't enough so we're actually going to jump and then he'll hit us and then his hit will boost us even further. Similar to uh, if you've ever seen bomb boosting in, in Zelda. But like that. Uh, so I'm just going to get a little bit of rage so I move on moves. Um, so now this is the other thing. If your class is fast enough but doesn't have a long range stun like a Bjorn. I don't know if you can finish the challenge by yourself, but we're just going to activate this. We're going to stun him. We're going to run away. And now... We're going to wait for him to get over here. And he only knocks us back once, so we get one go at it. Otherwise we have to reset. Which is, it's, on, it's on a long walk, so it's actually up there. If you're coming, you'll notice the arrow when he gets the speed buff. We run ass now. We run, whack, and we jump. And I always wait for him to hit us first, and then I jump. And even though I was kind of late, I thought I wasn't going to make it, I thought I was kind of late there, but even with me being kind of late, getting the distance, and now we're here. And with that, guys, you should be able to finish the challenge. Uh, the next fight is actually pretty tough. You're fighting two Elite Masters at a time, but I'm going to leave it up to you to uh, figure out. Um, the boss is also somewhat tough, but as long as you kite around, it, uh, it helps a lot. Um, Thanks for watching, I'll see you.